subject leader for geography at UVHS and I just want to tell you a little bit about our A-level geography course. We cover the NXL specification at UVHS 6 form. Uh, it's made up of three papers, so a little bit like the GCSE. Paper one is all physical geography related. So first topics, we have a look at tectonics. In terms of best bits, you've got your plate boundaries and all of the different hazards that occur at those. We have a look at mega disasters, so you have a look at the Iceland eruption in 2010, and you also have a look at the Japanese tsunami in 2011. We also have a look at hazard management, what can be done to control those hazards that you've just learnt about, things like earthquake-proof buildings, things like designing the buildings so that ash that falls from a volcanic eruption falls off. Uh, to ensure that the building is uh, not damaged or doesn't collapse. You've also got glaciated landscapes, a classic physical geography topic, and you'll cover things like the processes that take place in those landscapes. We have a look at what glaciated landscapes are used for and management of them. With us being uh, within touching distance of the Lake District, it makes sense for you to have a look at management in the Lake District National Park. And you also have a look at Yosemite uh, and the Yosemite Valley and how that previously glaciated landscape has been managed today. We also then go to have a look at things like management um, on a much bigger scale, so the Antarctic Treaty, for example, uh, is one of the case studies that you'll have a look at on global scale management. You've also then got the water cycle and carbon cycle for paper one. You'll have a look at the processes for the water cycle. You'll have a look at what happens when we've got a surplus of water within the water cycle, so Storm Desmond is one of your examples. You'll also have a look at when we've got deficits in the water cycle and the shrinking arrow sea and some of the conflicts that are occurring. And within the carbon cycle, similarly, you'll have a look at things like problems with the imbalance of the carbon cycle, alternatives to fossil fuels, and climate change impacts. Paper 2 is human geography related. Same as paper 1, it's 2 hours 15, and you'll have a look at globalisation, uh, how the world has now become more interconnected, uh, and how we've had this emergence of more global TNCs such as Nike and McDonald's. You'll have a look at the environmental consequences of globalisation, for example, smog problems in Beijing and also poisoning from manganese factories. And then you have a look at switched on and switched off places too, so you've got the United States and Americanisation and Disneyfication, and then you've also got places like North Korea that are almost completely switched off from the rest of the world. Regenerating places, study at a local place is one of your major parts of this topic. You do an in-depth in study of Alberston and you'll compare that to Salford Keys as your contrasting place, looking at things like what shapes the identity of those locations and what changes they've experienced due to regeneration. You then have a little bit of a look further afield, so places like San Francisco as a successful place and Detroit as a less successful regenerated location. Moving on to superpowers. Having a look at patterns of power change through time, you'll also have a look at the emergence of the BRIC nations and the impacts that that has had to so things like your environmental problems and also conflicts that have started to occur between superpower nations in places like the South China Seas and also the Middle East. And then lastly, migration identity and sovereignty, looking at why people are migrating. Looking at this idea of sovereignty and the conflicts that um, some arguments about sovereignty can cause, specifically having all the places like Rwanda and also the Darfur region of Sudan. And then finally, the identity part of the migration identity and sovereignty topic. What does it mean to be British and does everybody have the same idea about this? Paper 3 is a synoptic paper, it's 2 hours 15 and it takes into consideration everything that you've covered in papers 1 and paper 2. And then finally, you've got your independent investigation or the NEA. It's a piece of coursework, three to four thousand words long. You'll design your own fieldwork, you'll collect a load of data on your question, you'll come back, you'll analyse it through a variety of graphs and images, photograph analysis, whatever it is that you've decided to do and investigate. And then hopefully at the end, you'll come to a conclusion and you'll eval evaluate your entire experience to say what went well and perhaps what needed to be improved.